So, hello, Becky. Hello, Regan. Everyone calls me Egan. Oh, my, Egan. My, my grandmother calls me Egan. Why? Ah? It, it's short for Egan. Si Egan man la. So, oh, I guess so. Yeah, yeah that makes sense to Sapa. <laughs> so, okay. Um, untuk Adal. And then, uh, I, I look at you as the most successful post uh, untuk Adal. Okay. Bukan mau kipas atau apa apa, but yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I I assume it's because of planning. What you do after, then, because not to to this everyone yang lepas tu kan, but I see yang yang pernah menang. They they not as how you say aggressive as you. I mean, do you? you Saya rasa kan, because um, when I joined the Unuk Ngadaw, it wasn't something that I had planned. Kebetulan, it was because uh, my sister was part of the committee in uh, the Klang Valley punya uh, Unuk Ngadaw pageant, and they didn't have enough participants. So at that point of time, Klang Valley just started uh, out by Yang. It was a, a known district as uh, extension. After that, I think Johor Bahru also came in. But Klang Valley was new. My sister was part of the committee. She said, "Allah, Allah, can you participate? Go join lah. Bis ko tua sudah. You're at the cutoff point." I was um, at that point 24, 25 years old. Memang yang I think you're reaching the limit of joining the Unuk Adal. But and I'm like, okay, I mean like, okay lah, satu long kau lah, and like, oh, just have fun. And at that point of time, my sister and I did not inform my father. Now my late, like my late father, because he he's not so into all these things. That he do like Egan, because you know, what are the chances of me winning? But uh, and, and 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 at that time, I was so confident in my knowledge of the culture, um, my dusun kadazan, also semua koyak yang cukup yang boleh order order makanan semua saja lah kan. But I got into state level. When I joined the state level, my father actually made a bet sama kawan kawan dia selagi di sini. Dia kalah tu, abis dia kalah tu because dia dia punya dusun tu, oh, kuyak, you know. And not the best way of you know inspiring your daughter, but I think he found out shock in shock because he found out through the newspapers kan ada semua macam wakil siapa 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 kan. I think we told him. That's how he found out because. I said, Kak, kau tahu, dia mau kami akan datang registration, and then dia mau letak gambar. And, and, and because, like I said, everyone who came um, for this pageant, they knew what to expect. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't have a full costume. I didn't have a team. Some people will ask me, "Siapa makeup artist kau?" And I'm like, "Sendiri," you know. And like, and I'm so used to my normal French bed. And I said, "Yeah, boleh tu kau punya rambut kena kambang." And I'm like, "Hot," because you don't. I don't do kambang hair, right? I do my normal French twists, and I, you know. And they said, "No, no, no, you don't." So last minute, I managed to get um, someone to come and assist me. The one because I pull strings, and um, my baju kadazan also. I managed to call uh, like friends to get me like I don't have enough tang tangkong and all that, all that things can. And um, of course, I read up and everything. So that was the good part because I was already a journalist. It was very easy for me to do research, and knowledge seeking was already very easy for me. That came easily. Um, having said that, going back to what you asked, uh, you, you said about how how I am. Thank you very much. More progressed. I mean, more progressive and more uh, successful in that sense. I think it was because I started my career already as a journalist, and I was. Already building a name, then I didn't have the Unuk Madal to. I, I didn't use Unuk Madal to, as a platform for me to go uh, to the broadcasting industry. I was already in the broadcasting industry. I was already hosting a show. Um, I was a bit shamed and a bit shy. Not shamed. I was shy to inform my colleagues in TV3 that I was joining this because I thought like Allah, kichikichi. But then it came out in the news, and they were like, Hey, you're joining this Unuk Madal. Um, but it, it, what I loved about me joining the Urugadao is that I felt so embarrassed that I didn't know as much as I should about my own culture. I talk about it so proudly here in Semenanjung, like, wow, she's a bahan biya, she's a bahan biya, she's a bahan biya, she's a bahan biya, she's a But I didn't know that the, 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 the many costumes of which daera, my logat was always mixed with karazan and dusun. It wasn't pure dusun, I had a mixture of karazan and dusun, but I thought it was fine. 
you know, so that opened my eyes about how if I'm going to be portraying a true Sabahan and representing my culture, get it right, you know, and that pageant actually made me re work really hard and got me more interested in my tradition and, and I think that was really good for me because that's when I started championing for Sabahans uh, and especially my community. So after that, you, you, did you... I see, because now you've, you've researched on Karazan Hussain and your background as a journalist. Did, did you find a, a, a channel where all of these can converge? Like, in your daily lives or in what you do? I, I realised that there wasn't much literature about our customs and traditions. It was very loose. It was surprising because when, I, um, even though my parents are, uh, you can tell, you, you know they are well versed in the language and certain traditions, but so whenever, um, whenever I can, I would try and document it over my vlogs and stuff on certain aspects of our traditions. For instance, making tapai. I had no idea how it was done. You, you vaguely know, but when my mom does it, her sisters do it and they have to have business about it. But to document it, I'm like, oh, oh, that's the reason why we do that. Oh, that's what, which, which uh, ingredients needed and everything. And I documented that. So I have that. And because I blogged about it, people from other countries like the Philippines, uh, from Thailand, from Indonesia, who have similar practices, have contacted me and said, like, we want to find out how you guys make your tapai, how different it is from our our culture and everything and I said you know what actually I've, I've done this basic homework from the vlog you can get it there but if you want more information you have to check my mom you know and then also for my father's um, funeral because we're a Catholic family but we wanted to also adhere to the traditions so even that and my husband is Muslim Melayu from Sinanjo and you know I grew up doing the mummy sock way that like, what hantu and hantu but to understand it fully and all this even my mom couldn't uh, tell me exactly kenapa kena perlu macam tu bang and it was great because even though my mom was at mourning she agreed also to be documented in this you know your, your father just died but at the same time like in Putin ba kita mau tahu apa ba why do we have this mummy sock why why are there some vegetables that my mom cannot eat during the seven days? So we documented all that in hope that at least around my future generation or people who need to know about this will be able to see it. Because right now, this is the era that we live in. It's all about digital. Not many people want to read literature. There are literatures out there that that's mentions here and there, but it's not really comprehensive. So the vlog that I did about that on the mummy song about uh, what 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 a certain pantang that my mom had to adhere to, whilst as respecting her religion, we did that, and that was that was the angle that we went through. So I think uh, marrying what I do with my job as a journalist and documenting what I see from my own traditions uh, back home in the Kampong, I think it's great that I, I was able to do all that. Again, many people called me and they said, like, oh, we didn't know that the movie was like this. And I said, it's different from district to district. Uh, but this is how it's done in Kampunan, and I didn't even know that, you know. And like, why have pakai topi? Why, you know, and my mom's also like gangster, because she, the only topi she had was my brother's like, like really gangster, OG. Punyani, I'm like, kenapa dia pakai topi macam tu yang mau nangis-nangis kan tinggal mayat, yang baru terbang tinggal mayat. Dan disini, I'm like, kenapa mami macam original gangster ni ya? Macam mau gelap pun, I'm like, ni saja topi yang saya beli jumpa. Diorang bilang kena tutup ke kepala. Jadi saya pakai tutup kepala, diorang bilang tutup kepala, lari, you know, things like that. Like, what for? Saya pun tidak tahu. So that's when we go interview lagi Aki Sia yang kononnya mau jaga my mom, who has to be a widow also, by the way. So all these things, I didn't know all this until we, you know, we, um, we did it. And it was fascinating in the eyes of, at least I grew up with a bit of knowledge about the mummy saw, about this and stuff like that. But for someone like Azmi, Jola Bosi, who's my husband and manager, who was a bit like, yeah, yeah, what's this mummy saw, what's this mummy saw about, you know? And uh, it was eye-opening for him, from a completely different race, background, da da era, and for him to see it, but... I'm straying a little bit, but I'm telling you all this. Um, go to my blog. I will show, I'll, I'll share with you the link. 
but there is one part where, and, and that's where he regrets. Uh, when I'm pointing to this person, this invisible person over here, I'm, to, I'm referring to my husband, okay? Um, that's where he regrets this part because uh, one of the things that we do for Indomomi Sock is we put powder. So in ours, we put uh, flour. I think we, my uncle letak the pom and we prepared a tray of some of the favorite foods of my father, which included beer, by the way. And uh, for the beer, we did a makala because we were like, you know what, we might as well do an experiment and see. So my cousins and I were like, yeah, might as well see kalau dadi betul-betul ada lah. So we did a marker on the beer. Uh, we put the, the, the flour on the places where he would most likely go. Switched off the lights. Heard some crying. And opened the lights. And we did the interview. We found out that there were foot, footprints. So I think the first thing was um, the beer, memang huh. turun. But my husband, eh, scientifically maybe it's the form of the beer. Good point. Maybe the form the turun because at that point when you put maybe got foam. Yeah, that makes sense. Even though that's quite a lot of foam, fine. Then we said, how about the the bedak macam you know ada kena macam kena pijak pijak lah kan. Because we were like, oh my god, oh my god, and he's and someone said maybe the cat, but there was no cat, but you know, so there was always a maybe, 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 maybe. Even my cousin claimed to have seen my father looking, like walking around, looking at the wreaths, nodding at like looking at one by one. You know, ada bunga kan, ada tu apa condolences, punya messages kan. Kononnya my cousin nampak lah, my dad si boleh olah tengok one by one, one by one. So she was crying. My cousin was crying because she saw him so vividly. No one else saw him. I didn't see him. We were inside because the immediate family were inside. But my cousins yang nakal sikit say, kami mau di luar, kami mau di luar, kami mau tengok hantu. You know? Nah, aku nampak lah dia punya hantu. And itu pun he was saying, you know, maybe he was saying, my cynical husband was saying, you know, maybe you see what you want to see. The next day, um, I saw someone shared over my father's Facebook. The sharing of uh, so there were see Dr. Jeffrey came to to the funeral and he was consoling. So there was a picture taken of Dr. Jeffrey and I think Pyrin or Jeffrey, I can't remember, consoling my mom. So someone had taken that picture and posted it and tagged my father tagged my father lah, on Facebook and some of the memories. I mean I mean us lah, uh, the family members. And then someone shared it. So I thought my mom lah, my mom must have been the one who shared it because she my mom has Access to my father's phone, so kita orang semua macam okay. My mom must have shared it because she used my father's phone. Bila talk to my mom, my mom said, "Bukan kau kaya ada passport, kas passport dia." I went, "No. Why would I want to go into dad's? I forgot dad's password. I, I know I created that Facebook account for him like many years ago, but I completely forgot the password. And I thought dad would have changed the password, so it wasn't me. Was it you, dad? Was it you, Kat? Was it Nina? I said, "Mom, you're the only one that has dad's phone." Was it you who? He said like, "Tiada, saya tengah sibuk apa saya tidak charge juga tu phone tu." So when we went back to our footage, the vlog footage, we realized that the footprints went to the place where my dad normally sits, and we did see this. The which kami kasi kemaskan tu perkatil. So he sat down at his side of the bed. So kuruk lah depannya kumut depan kumut semua kena tempat duduk. And that is where my mom had kept the phone what? bar. So we, so that one, my husband was like, "Are you sure no one shared?" I said, "No, sumpah, sumpah, na, no boy, my sister, mom, no dad." So that was where he went like, "Whoa, regret I didn't do like a proper before and after because he only did, you know, like a sw a swing by. So we had to do like minute by minute, like second by second, thing what betul betul ba. So things like this, it's so interesting." Whether you believe it or not, but this is a, a tradition, and as a journalist, you want to document things like that. And we really don't know if um, you know what what happens after life, and why does our tradition actually believes in doing that seven day more we stop for them to go and like last time to say goodbye to everything. My dad loves his phone, loves his Facebook, so that was just like shit. I think, I think that was that. And I think that it was him drinking the beer. So that made point. That 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 that, that sort of like made him like, yeah, mungkin si Dadi kan. 
So yeah, I, it's 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 wonderful that we are able to document all this and to freeze it for our future generations to keep, and as well as being a digital album as a memory for us. I can look back at it and go like, yeah, yeah, that's quite cool. Wow. Oh yeah, I did not expect this. <laughs> But I, I was interviewing another artist uh, last night and she was saying that she has been reading about uh, Malay archipelago history and how uh, us uh, Bornians, Malaysians are very very rich and mature with culture and heritage yeah. and yet we seem to be borrowing, still borrowing from other places for, for our own Acceptance. Okay, I'm lost. <laughs> I think where you're heading towards is you're right. Um, when Azmi and I got married, uh, we didn't do the full reception at that year, on that year because there was still some reluctance from my father's side about me uh, embracing Islam. I found out much, I just thought he didn't, he was angry because I converted or reverted in that sense. But I found out much later, my dad and I have a very odd relationship where we communicate our thoughts much, much later when it's too late. I found out much later, it was only because if you're going to do this, kalau kau sembayang, kau sembayang betul-betul. Kau jangan main mind, but it's a religion, it's not to main mind. You don't just enter into a religion and like, okay, you believe in it, you believe in it. He may not be a staunch Catholic, but he goes, he believes in the faith of God. So he wanted to make sure that I was still on the right path of being spiritual. So having said that, we took a year, after five, after the fifth year, baru macam we had a proper reception sama keluarga lah kan. And I said, I want to have a sanding, I also want to have the rinjis rinjis. And he said, you know the rinjis rinjis is not actually a Muslim thing, it's not an Islamic thing. If you want to do this, we do it the Islamic way. It's not, it's actually a part of a, I don't think it's even Melayu, it's from Hindu. So that got me like, ya ka? Tapi kenapa yang all this Melayu Melayu punya wedding yang beria ia? Like the inai and all those things. So going back to your question about how we are borrowing, cultures and traditions I, I not see from other people um, I guess just ha that's just how the world exists coexists with one another mm -hmm. they say that we Karaza and Rusun are actually from mainland China at one point of a time that's why there's similarities in our costume Hitam juga don't have traditional costume actually and we believe in certain things that the Chinese also believe in so there is a possible coexistence of uh, cultures and stuff like that. You'd be surprised that you go to uh, rural areas in Vietnam, in in uh, Thailand, and we still share that same similar uh, traditions. Even the tools that we use. I brought mom uh, to Chiang Mai the other day, and she she said like, "Eh, kami pun pakai macam ni, sama juga kan? Kita punya pakai untuk menuai padi macam ni." So to say that we borrow or we steal, tidak juga. Saya rasa it's just it, it just gets assimilated into our culture, and then because there's always this intermarital um, marriage and faith going together, so that's where the confusion comes in, and then you sort of embrace it as no, that's Malayu. Nasi lemak belongs to Malaysia. No, no, it belongs to Indonesia. Or no, 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 no. You know where? It's just how it is. We're just regionally connected. Move to kids. Okay. I, I see that you are very experienced, <laughs> knowledgeable. Um, do you see this passing down to your kids? Do you see this? Do you your hopes, your your practices with your children? I mean, I've seen your your vlogs and and your your children are very understanding towards what we do. They, they know mom and dad. What's your take on that? I've always knew I always knew I wanted to become a mother at a very early age. Not that I wanted to get pregnant early, but I always knew that I wanted to mother children. I love babies, I love kids. So much so that um, that is the reason why one of my chita chita was to be a teacher so that I could be with kids and children. 
So when I was pregnant with Isabel, although I didn't expect, actually all, all three pregnancies, I didn't plan any of my pregnancies. Um, so although I didn't plan for Isabel to arrive that fast, or, or to come to my life that, that fast, um, I was of course excited to have her then. And I, I also think it's because of my, my upbringing, where I had a very typical, stern, strict father, and a very practical, loving, kind mom. So having those two very strong, opposite sides of the spectrum, Punya's type of parenting style, has made me the parent that I am. I know what I want from both sides, which worked for me. My dad was very strict, and that only made me a very rebellious teenager. I thank him now, because I think Numbak last year, kalau dia tidak strict sama saya tidak pernah pukul, and he didn't let me, he just wanted all the A's. He was a typical, where's your A's? Why, I got came home from my, my PMR results, uh, trial results, and there was one B, and he said like, because I'm like, look guys, I got six A's and one B. He said, that will happen to your B. You know, he focused on that. And and, and um, whilst my mom was uh, more practical in the sense where she would say stuff like, look, kalau kamu mau apa, boyfriend, boyfriend semua, ingat, when you kiss a boy, you can't go back to just holding hands. And let me tell you, I'm a very busy nurse. I've got a lot of commitments right now. I cannot, if you get pregnant, I cannot be looking after my grandchildren. So, pandai pandai lah kamu. So, she's, what of my dad's like, no boyfriends, what is this? Nanti kumpan takton, sundal lah nanti. You know, he's like, my mother's practice was like, look, if you attempt your young girl, the hormones are raging. If you start kissing a guy, you can't just go back to holding hands. If you get pregnant, this is the consequences. So, be ready to face that. She was more practical. So, my mom would see, my dad would say, like, just say no. You can't date any guys right now. Just say no. So they used to have their their disagreements on parenting advice, and it seems like I'm the same with Azmi. Azmi is like my kids are gonna be virgins until they're 40 years old. Uh, whereas I'm like, you know, girls, you know, you can you, you might be experimenting with girls at one point. You do, 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 do. He's like, no, no, that's lesbian and gay or whatever. No, you shouldn't encourage all this. I say yes, but what if? It's okay for them to come to me. So I see my father and my mom. But at the same time, because I know it was my father who made sure that I was always on the straight path, I, even though he, uh, he is, again, imaginary, Joe Labosi is here, even though he is more of the strict one in the family, they are the one who dengan anak anak saya. So whatever they want, kan, lama -lama he will go like, okay, whatever they need it. Okay, what if I'm like, no, you just, we have to stick to what we've already agreed on. If you say, if we said no, we have to both commit to this decision and stick to it. Oh, tiba -tiba aku bilang, oh, then I'm going to look like a bloody bad guy, right? Um, but I feel it's also important to be very open to your kids. I got into um, uh, this Twitter frenzy for a while because my daughter, Iman, who is eight years old, is fascinated with pregnancies. So she, maybe she wants to become a gynae, I don't know. But she's always been fascinated and I know that she loves reading books about pregnancy, about your boobs, your vagina, and I don't say about pepe, I don't say lolo, I don't yeah. say tonkalo, I say straight. You name it as it is and there's a reason for that, which you can find out on my blog too. Um, and, and, and I was doing my waxing. I did a Brazilian wax and I IG storied it. I said, look at Iman, so fascinated. So someone picked it up like, oh, I don't know about you guys, tapi I rasa macam, ee, geli lah. Kenapa artis ni, I hate the name artist and celebrity by the way. Kenapa artis ni membiarkan anak dia tengok dia punya punani, you know? And people started slamming me. And someone, some, one Sabahan person actually said, Dad, kau nampak kau tahu pasal ni? Because of course it was a start getting viralized, right? And I said, you know what? That is her opinion. She doesn't feel that it's the right thing to do. That is her right to, to yeah. think about. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It doesn't feel. It's not a right thing for her and her kids, maybe. But for me, because I know my child, I'm comfortable. We we bathe together, Bogel, and 
I'm comfortable because I want them to know that they can come to me anytime someone touches you inappropriately. They can come to me, Mom, someone touched my breast. Mom, someone touched my vagina. And when it wasn't someone that I knew, you know, I want them to be able to come and express themselves to me frequently, free, uh, freely. So that is her opinion. But I think what one thing that I didn't like was from that thread, that Twitter thread, there was one person who said, Allah, Pumpuan, you open sangat. You know, Pumpuan, you open sangat. Um, I dengar-dengar yang sebelum show pun, dia main dengan dia punya husband kuat sangat sebelum show start. And that was like, wow. Because that was, uh, I've, ne I've never, I would love to have sex with my husband right before a show. But number one, I'm more dressed up. I've got my makeup yeah, on. It's macam logistically budu, horrible. Budu, but, and macam kau tidak, saya tidak boleh game, but, saya tidak boleh macam, I cannot get my mode on if I'm on work mode, right? So I was curious, so I asked that person. I know I'm straying a little bit, but I'm getting, I'm getting something. It's okay, it's okay. Um, I asked the person, I said, Hi, dari mana kau dengar ni cerita? You know? For the auntie. Very politely, you know, my auntie came out, and then like, I would really love to know who this person is, because, um, you know, I, I don't mind, but it doesn't look good for my client to know that their MC pergi main sana belakang backstage macam yo that's not nice yo you know I mean even though we're husband and wife and we can do whatever we want but it just didn't seem right oh I think the person terkejut because I confronted the person and I was saying this to the kids about how Iman you know kan kita kan apa because kau tengok siapa nani but then and we have this chat during dinner my husband needs to know because he's my manager and sometimes he needs to manage expectations of what's happening the perception and everything so I told him about it so like Number one, why did you go and take a, a shot of your bubot lah? Why did you have... I said, of course you're not lah, of course I'm covered, but Iman is there and he doesn't show my vagina, but it was just that. And two, I'm not talking about that. I, that person has every right to think what she wants to talk about, you know, because this is my parenting belief. But about, this is what I'm talking about, about how um, another person is slandering, putting all this fitna, saying that this, 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 this. He said like, I wish I was having sex with you before, you know, and this was conversation was going on with the kids around her. And I want them, I, I want them to know that this is just the world that we live in. If you're going to be on digital media, if you are going to be on social media, you have to be responsible for the things that you say, because those are fitna. And if I wanted to be, if I had my way, I would have, I could have, like, hey, ni mengaitkan orang, if you can't give me the sauce, this is fitna, and I can sue you, but what for? I just wanted them to, and I made sure that I retweeted that comment. I said, ha ha ha, I'm curious. And that person said, oh, sebenarnya I tak boleh bagi tahu lah kawan I, siapa, tapi, you know. And I went, oh, well, I just let you know, if before a show, I normally do some breathing exercise and some light yoga to ease up the butterflies in my stomach, just to let you know. You know, you have to put the person at their place, at the same time, be kind about it. And I think that's another thing that I always strongly believe in. You, you can be honest and you can be constructive in what you say to people, but let it be with kindness. Let it be constructive. And I want my children to see all that because I think there's just too much hatred around, especially on social media where you can be very vile and you can be bullying because it's easy to hide beside the facade of a keyboard warrior, right? And I don't want my kids to do to be like that, especially because we've already given them access to um, social media as well as uh, their devices at such a young age. It does come with responsibility.